Hey guys, this is Rich in the Philippines. Thanks for joining me on this channel. And as always, we appreciate your support. Today, I wanted to talk about something that's actually almost happening in real time. I wanted to share some experience with you and try to give you what's going on with me so that it won't happen to you. Today, I said goodbye to a very dear friend of mine, and I'm going to get into that a little bit further as we go along. But before we get into that, I wanted to talk about an organization that is almost loathed back in America, and that's the DMV. You know, when we were growing up, the DMV almost had a special place in hell. When we were growing up, when we were kids, or teenagers, I should say, when we first started getting our license, the last place you wanted to go to to spend an afternoon at the Department of Motor Vehicles, trying to get your license, trying to get your car registered, taking your motorcycle test. I mean, I don't know about you, but I remember many of those traumatic moments. Even just recently, let's say 10 years ago, when I, when I finally decided I had to have a motorcycle license. Uh, that said, my favorite saying, fast forward to the Philippines. And because I had help from the PRA, it was, it was okay. It, you know, it was still quite a ordeal. It was a holiday, and so they were closing soon. And um, it, I, I had never seen anything like it. it. It didn't even come close to America. That being said, my opinion of the DMV in my home state, well, I have two home states, but my home state in the Midwest, they're great guys. They're great people. They're great men and women. Um, I know the guy who runs it. He really tries to do the right thing for people, get you in and out. And um, it was much better experience in the Midwest than it was on the coast. And again, what brings us today? Well, today I got rid of, sold my motorcycle. There's changes in the wind with me and it just didn't have a place in my plan here in the Philippines. That's what I wanted to talk about. When you pick a vehicle here, I put a lot of thought into what I was going to pick. That's why I picked the ADV 150. There's actually a 160 now. The differences are minute except for the price. Um, the look is still similar. It's a great bike. The reason I picked that was several. One, it's much in demand. Two, it has a great ride. Three, it takes on the potholes and it really has a suspension system that is kind of far and above any other bike that I had test drove here. And four, I thought about resale. So I went out and looked at new motorcycles. Now, having a motorcycle background, having a dealership background, um, especially growing up with so many dealerships in my life, we owned a Harley Davidson dealership in the West Coast. And I must tell you, in the old days, having a Harley Davidson dealership, it was akin to the, the royal family. When you came into the dealership, you just didn't go to a bike and say, I want that one. You brought a wad of cash in and said, what can I get? Or you brought a wad of cash in and said, when can I get it? And we said, well, I'll tell you when you can get it. When we tell you, you can get it. Now, granted, all that's changed now. And, you know, for the better or for the worst, I just work with a dealership in the Midwest, great people. And, you know, they're reaching out to new, to new generations every day. And they really are good people. With that said, again, I walked into a dealership here in the Philippines, several, and got this vibe of like, well, what are you doing here and what do you want? And you know what was interesting? It wasn't a skin color. It wasn't a foreigner thing. It was just a motorcycle dealership thing. And I said, well, I want an ADV. This is a, a year ago, maybe more than a year and a half ago. And they said, ha, everyone wants an ADV. So get in line and also be prepared to pay 10 or 20,000 pesos over price, over list, excuse me. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I've never done that in my life. Even of course, my family had a dealership. We never, you know, I never did that. Actually, that's not true. When I think I got the first 1200 Harley Davidson Sportster, I think I waited for that only because our dealership had to wait from the factory. 
the point is, is that this dealership wanted me to wait and wanted me to pay and you know didn't really care if I was a Filipino or if I was American or if I was from Britain you know it didn't matter to them they weren't going to give me service anyway bring us brings us to chapter two so as I'd done all my life I like to buy vehicles motorcycles um, cars that are slightly new or demos as we used to call them in America and I would pay them off and drive them multiple vehicles so I would never have a lot of miles on anything so when you go to sell them you get a good return you know fast forward again maybe second or third time this tape to my ADV it had low miles um, I drove it to certain places and that was it I treated it well I gave it service uh, besides parking I got a bunch of nicks and dings on parking. And I really want to do a video on parking because parking in the Philippines, you guys, is like nowhere else I've seen in the world. That's probably not true. It's like nowhere else I've seen in America. Because if they parked, if people parked like they park here in America, there would be fisticuffs. There would be blows thrown. Because people will park right next, the people will park right on top of you and won't think a thing about it. And it's okay. Um, and it's not okay with me. And even as of today, somebody literally parked on top of me and, and they didn't have to. That's what gets me. But with that being said, you know, there's not a sense of malice. It's just a sense of, meh, we're going to park where we can park. And that's that. So getting back to the subject, I tend to digress, is that my ADV had some nicks and some dings on it, no falls. Um, it was still in really, really good shape, low miles. So it was worth a lot on resale. Well, I bought it secondhand. So I was the second owner. And that's a big problem here in the Philippines. I still had not got my original plates that I applied for a year ago. And one of my friends, she hasn't got her plate I want to say, and you know, it took her three years to get her plate. Uh, actually, it was my girlfriend. I just said my friend, because she'll watch and get mad, and be tempo. Uh, the point is, is that the the whole uh, DMV here, we think we had it bad in America. My God. So the whole point of this is that I went to sell my bike, and because of misunderstandings, misunderstandings, and a lack of knowledge about paperwork needed on all ends, on my end, the guy who sold it to me, the people that are buying my bike, I had to take a ding on pricing because of a thought of lack of paperwork on my end. And, you know, the guy who sold it to me was adamant. Oh, no, 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 no. You have everything you need. People that were buying my bike. Oh, no, 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 no. You need more paperwork me i just want to sell the bike and move forward and you know i th i thought oh maybe this is just something that um something that it's happened to me i looked into a lot of other of my friends other expats and filipinos and i have a, a an expat friend he's got a beautiful vehicle bought it at uh, a fair price low miles um just in great shape and he is having the hardest time selling it because he actually hired a fixer to find his paperwork. They took the money. And then after they took the money, they were like, uh, I need more money from you. And like the most of us, he's like, no, no, it doesn't work like that, boss. And they're like, okay, well, then we're not going to go forward. This is after he's paid thousands and thousands of pesos. The challenge, the problem is, is that there's this slowness or this unresponsiveness from the dmv here again if it takes you years and years to get your plates it takes you years and years to get your paperwork you're not showing as a registered owner and you've had the vehicle for a year or two so i guess the reason for me making this video is to tell you buy brand new save your peso save your lunch money take the jibney take the trike probably the trike take the bus don't buy secondhand. And I, I'm probably going to, you know, cut some people off on that and 
tell me what you think below. I mean, am I wrong? You know, I don't know what to do. Um, my, so getting back to the bike, you know, I'm so glad I bought a bike that was popular. I can't imagine what it would have, what would have happened if the bike wasn't in demand. I sold this bike in 12, no, 17 hours. And I sold it mm, two or three times. And the reason that it didn't go through the first couple of times where people were just so, they said yes, and they thought about the paperwork, and they're like, uh, no. One guy who turned around and blocked me after he sent me the email said his wife said no. And that's not the first time I've heard that. You know, the wife said no. And probably it's not the first country I've heard that. The wife said no. So getting back to my advice is save your pesos, buy new, have them do the paperwork so that you know that it's done correctly. If you buy secondhand, there's a chance you could have happened to me and what's happened to a couple of us here where you either end up sitting on the vehicle or you end up, you know, taking less and having them do a ton of legwork to get it sold. Let me know your thoughts here. This is Rich in the Philippines. Be safe.